What's up guys and welcome to another video. Today we are actually starting the turbo build for Ronda, the white Civic. And uh, we are going to be chipping the ECU and I'm going to show you guys exactly how to do that. I should also add that my ECU is an auto and my car is a manual so I need to do an auto to manual conversion on this ECU which I will also show you. <laughs> Now I'm going to start by giving you guys a background of what I have going on with my cars right now. Um, right now my daily Luna, the gray Civic, I've been having tons of issues with it. So you guys saw the last video was a head gasket video. So um, it has like this crazy misfire going on. I don't know if it's a misfire or a fuel cut or what. But um, before it started happening I put new wires, um, spark plug wires and spark plugs and a new fuel filter in it. Um, since the issue started happening, I did the head gasket. I thought that might have been part of it because it did have an external head gasket leak. But I thought maybe coolant was getting into the cylinders and causing that kind of misfire that was going on. But that didn't end up being the case. Um, next, I did replace the air filter. I uh, fixed a vacuum leak that I found. I put a new um, cap and rotor on it. And I found, uh, um, I tested the fuel pressure. It's holding fuel pressure just fine. I tested it with and without vacuum. All of that's great. Um, I swapped the entire distributor in case it was one of the ignition components in the distributor. I swapped the throttle body so it has a different MAP sensor and a different TPS throttle position sensor. And um, I also tried driving it with the O2 unplugged and it's still having this crazy like misfire. Sometimes it doesn't do it at all, sometimes it just hesitates a little bit, sometimes the car is nearly undrivable. So I'm thinking it might be the ECU, um, but if you guys have any issues or if you guys have any suggestions uh, feel free to leave them in the comments. Any help is appreciated. Um, I'm actually going to plug this ECU into that car once I'm done chipping it and see if that fixes my issues. But let's get started. So over here I have my setup of uh, what we're working on. We have the chip kit right here and we have the tools that we need right here and here's our ECU. So over here we have the chip kit which has the 74HC373 right here and then we have the um, the socket for the chip and then over here um, luckily my kit was labeled but yours probably won't be my last one wasn't we have the C51 and C52 things right here um, we have the R54 resistor which this will not be on all ECUs so it is um, it you it might not apply to yours we have a J10 ohm resistor right here some kits come with a switch which I prefer so you can switch back to the stock maps if you need to um, this one came with a zero ohm resistor. Some don't come with anything at all, in which case you would just take one of these leads that's left over and jump it on the J1 pin. Here we have um, the main capacitor for the system. They usually give you these because these are the most likely to fail. Um, so it's good to replace that while you have this open. And then right here we have the data logging pins right here. And I'll show you how to install all of that. Now, the ECU that we're using is a PO6. This is going to be running my D16Y7, but in the meantime, it's going to run my B18B1. I'm not going to show you guys how to chip for VTEC since I don't have VTEC engines. So we're just going to be chipping this ECU as is. And over here, we have our tools. We have a soldering iron with a solder station, um, screwdriver to take the ECU apart, some solder, and um, right here are our desoldering solutions. We have um, Chemwick soldering braid, desoldering braid. This stuff is what I suggest using and then we also have a solder sucker which I only use if I absolutely have to. So the first thing that you want to do is take apart the top and bottom plate of the ECU. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. So I'm going to show you guys what we're going to be working on. We're going to be working in this area right here for the most part. We have our C51 right here, C52, and our R54 and our J1 right above it. And then we have right here where the um, 74HC373 chip is going to be here. And then we have where our socket is going to go. And um, right down here is where your auto and manual stuff is. Mine's an auto, so what we need to do is remove this R17 and R18 and install a jumper across R18. Then if we come all the way over here, we have our main capacitor that we're going to be replacing as well. Before you start soldering anything in, you need to desolder. 
but you want to desolder absolutely everything because if you ruin the board while you're desoldering, you don't want to waste any of your parts on the ruined ECU. So we are going to desolder the C51, C52, all of these on this chip, all of these for the socket, um, these four right here for the R54 and the J1. We're going to desolder the R18 and the or the RP18 and the RP17 and then we are also going to take this out and desolder those as well and I'm going to try to show you guys the best I can. Alright so we're just going to start in this area right here. What you do is take your desoldering braid and set it down. I usually only do like a, a few at a time but I'm just going to desolder some of these so you guys can see. So you can see it soaks it all right up. This is what you want to use rather than the solder sucker if you can because the solder sucker will sometimes take these pads off of the board and it'll ruin it. Sometimes you have trouble taking the solder off with the desoldering braid. What you can try doing first before using a solder sucker is actually adding more solder to them and then sucking them off. And you want to keep doing this until all of these pads have no solder on them so that you can put the new chip in. This is what you're really looking for right here. So I'm going to go ahead and desolder the rest of these and show you guys what I have. This is what it looks like when it's all done. You can see that's desoldered. All of this is desoldered. These are desoldered. These are desoldered. All of this is desoldered. I desoldered the uh, auto stuff here and the data logging pins. Now, if you're going to be data logging, most likely, um, I think Uber Data is the only one that doesn't do this, but you need to find this J12 zero ohm resistor it's a jumper and you need to desolder that now in my case because I'm converting from auto to manual I need to put a jumper right here on the RP18 right there and you could just take a lead from one of your things in your kit over here but what I'm actually going to do is I'm gonna repurpose this J12 so I'm gonna desolder this J12 and I'm gonna go ahead and solder it in place where this RP18 is and you can also see that I did desolder this capacitor right here. Um, to get these out, some of this stuff is difficult. I did have to use the solder sucker quite a bit, even though I didn't want to. Um, and did almost mess up a few solder pads as well. But everything seems to be going good so far. Um, but what you have to do is kind of just pull on it from this end while you desolder each lead back and forth over and over again. Just touch it with your soldering iron to get that out because you're not going to really be able to desolder those solder pads. Same goes with these resistors down here. Alright, so desoldering takes quite a while. Soldering takes not nearly as long. I already put one of the chips in and I soldered two posts to hold it in place. And now all you have to do is touch your soldering iron right there. Touch the solder to it. And you just want to solder each one of these. And I'm just going to run time lapse while I solder the rest of this together. Alright, so now you can see everything that we've done. We soldered in this guy, this, this, these two resistors right here, this one down here converting it to a manual, the data logging thing, and we desoldered uh, J12 right there, and we soldered in this new um, capacitor. So, now, I'm not going to lie, um, this one was a little bit sloppy, so I'm really hoping that it worked. There's a couple solder pads that like started to lift. One of them being this one over here. Uh, where am I looking? This one over here for the capacitor. This one right here. Um, it is just a ground, so if it did lift and this doesn't work, I can wire this ground to somewhere else that's grounded on the board. I could honestly put like a wire from here to one of these screws, I think. And that would ground it. So... Um, 
We're going to go ahead and put a chip in here and pop it in the car and see if it works. Alright, so as you can see the car is running. We come in here. Here's the other EC that was in there. Alright, so I'm going to try to show you guys what it's doing. It's really snowy out, so I'm going to pay mostly attention to the road here. Um, but I have the ECU in, it's working. Um, the same as the old one did, so that tells me it's not the ECU that was messed up, and that this one should be good. So that's going to be the end of this video, but I just want to show you what's going on with this car. So, um, right now I'm driving, it's fine. Sometimes it's not fine driving, sometimes it's really bad, but right now it's fine driving. If I give it about, like, a quarter throttle, it'll cut out completely. So right now, it's cut out completely. Oh, it just came back. So... I replaced the TPS, which is what you would think it would be, but um, I replaced it with a used one, so maybe I should get a new one, but I'm going to do it again. The throttle will cut out. It's out, and if you floor it, sometimes it stays cut out. However, if I go from no, no throttle to floored, it works just fine. Now, that's not always the case either. Sometimes it'll cut out when I do that, but right now, that's what it's doing. So if you guys have any ideas, um, shoot them in the comments. I'd really appreciate it. All right, you guys. Uh, oh, ignore Mario in the background there. But uh, the ECU was a success. Everything went well. Obviously, the car is still not working right. I did drop the exhaust off of it to see if maybe the cat was clogged. Um, but uh, it's still doing the same thing. So I have a new fuel pump coming in for the white car. Um, it's a Walboro 255. I'm going to do a video of installing that. And then I'm going to take the fuel pump from that car and put it in the gray car and see if that helps. Since I was able to test fuel pressure, but I wasn't really able to test fuel pressure under load. So we're going to give that a shot and see what happens. But once again, if you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments. Um, if you like the video, make sure that you like, like the video, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends. Um, and thank you for watching. Peace out.